And um, let's open up our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. <coughs> Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for sending your only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on you would have eternal life as a free gift. We thank you for giving us your life, giving us your mind that comes through the Word of God, your church, Father, your spirit that dwells within us. We thank you so much. We thank you for our church here. We just ask you just to bless these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, past couple Sundays, we've been talking about faith obedience. We talked uh, like two Sundays ago about faith obedience. We talked about, uh, like we said, like in Hebrews chapter 11, it says that Abraham uh, went out not knowing where he was going, that, Abra- that, Abraham, um, that Abraham obeyed God by faith. By faith, and we, what we said before is that faith without faith we cannot we we cannot obey God, and, and the Bible tells us that to cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians ten four. We are we are in this um, uh, in uh, this um, uh, spiritual warfare. That begins to happen. There's a, there's a spiritual warfare that happens that was never there before because we didn't know what it meant to uh, to to obey God. We did, we had no idea. We were lost in this world. And then we we talked about last Sunday about faith that works by love, Galatians five six. So faith cannot operate apart from love. It's not possible for it to do that. If I, I, I can have all of this Bible knowledge in the Bible, but if I don't have love, it's not effectual. There's no effect there. And in everything that we do, supposedly for God, without love, will be burned up at, at the, uh, uh, the Bema seat as wood, hay, and stubble. If, if it's not mixed with love. You know, I mean, we, we mix faith with the Word of God and it becomes effectual to us. And then that faith works by love, inner geo. That's very important for us to understand that. Faith works by love. So if we have a church, then, you know, it's, it's important for us to have two things, isn't it? Two vital things. The, the uh, preaching of the Bible, the preaching of the Word of God, and to have love. And to have love. We need these things. And so... How does a Christian grow up into spiritual maturity? Like, how does that happen? Like, we are born again, right? We're born again of the Spirit. And then but we have this natural birth. We, we, were, we, were, we were born of our mother. Um, and then we grow spiritually too, don't we? But, but we can, someone who gets born of their mother, they grow naturally. But what's the difference between natural birth and natural growth and spiritual birth and spiritual growth. Yeah, one is physical, but, but when you're born of your mother, it, is, it wasn't your choice. You didn't choose what family you were, you were going to be born of. There was no choice there. There was no choice in, involved. And as far as our, our physical growth, it's, it is kind of like, I mean, it happens, all, all, um, it happens almost automatically, because we know that we need to eat food and we need nutrition and we need these kinds of things to grow, but most people they 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 end up growing up into they 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 grow they grow up into adults. But when we we choose to be born into the family of God, it's by choice that we choose that. They did that that we choose, and then how do we grow? The Bible tells us in Second First uh, Peter two two. To as, as newborn babes to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And that word sincere, it means that it's not polluted. It's pure. The word of God, it doesn't deceive you. It doesn't lead you astray. It doesn't lead you somewhere else that's not true. Because every word of God is pure. It says that somewhere in the Bible, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Somewhere. Every word of God is pure. Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30 yes. So and so and so we believe that a man shall not live by by bread alone, but by every word 
that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we live by truth. And we choose it. So, so as a newborn babe, to desire. So there's the key there, to desire. Like a little baby who desires milk from its mother, and the mother has to get up at night to feed the baby because the baby's hungry. It's like, like, like that we are to have that kind of spiritual hunger. Because if you don't desire it, then you won't have it. There's, there's people in this world that are like that. They, 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 they're, they're born again, but yet there's not a strong desire for truth in the Bible, to get into the deep things of God, so that we grow thereby. It is by choice. And so uh, there, are, there are attributes of someone who is spiritually mature, isn't there? Like someone who possesses faith, someone who possesses love, someone who, can, who knows how to go through trials in life. And, you know, in Abraham, he failed, he stumbled, but he got back up again. And he believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. As we're talking about Romans, we're talking about um, Abraham and his faith in the book of Romans. And so, um, let's read the text here, um, because we know that, well, before we read the text, like the Bible works, works, works as a weapon, doesn't it? It can be food, it can be a weapon. In other words, it is... And, and, and how does it work that because we are sanctified by truth in John 17, 17? And Jesus said it, you are sanct- sanctified them by truth. Thy word is truth. That, that, that it's the word of God that um, heals us. That this is the power of the truth of the word of God. This is how it becomes a weapon for us in, 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 in um in, uh, in our lives, that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might to put on the whole armor of God, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6.10. So is, let, let, let's read what it says here. Um, let's, where are we starting here? Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. So there we, we know that he gave, who gave? God gave. He gave apostles. Who are apostles? The word is apostelos. It means to send out. So to send from, actually. Apo from, stello means to send, to send from. To send from somebody. So who was the sender? Jesus. He sent out his disciples who became apostles. Because they were eyewitnesses of Christ. They had been taught by him. So there's no more. We, we believe there are no more modern day apostles. But are we sent out? We are sent out mm-hmm. by Christ. Yes, we, we are sent. But, we, but the, uh, there's no more office of apostle. There's a, that, that has, so we don't have like apostles in our church. Because, because we believe that there was 12 apostles. And they've all passed away. So there's no more apostles. And he gave some prophets. Well, what, what is a prophet? Is it a foreteller? It could be. Foreteller, foreteller of future events. Or is it foretelling what has already been foretold? And the Bible tells us that there's no... That, that, that talks about the prophecy of Scripture in First Peter, right? That no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. So what does that mean, the prophecy of Scripture? The foretelling of the Word. What's already been said in the Bible. We're not saying anything new that's never been said before. We're not saying anything that God has never said. We don't come up with new things. Although that we can look into the Bible and and God reveals to us new truth that we've never seen before, that we can read the same verse and it's like, wow, I've never seen that before in the Bible. It's amazing. So what we receive with meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls in James 1.21. That's kind of a a key ingredient, isn't it? Being meek. Because the meek he will teach. In Psalm 25, 9. So, they, so what, what is meekness? I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were, they were kind of proud in what they were saying. They were saying, that, well, yeah, I always have faith. It's like, oh, really? It's like, and then he, he wanted to disagree with me about something, but it's like, well, but wait a minute. You're like, like, what's the problem? What, there, there, there becomes a barrier there. There becomes a blindness over the eyes because of not being meek. And so we realize that we know nothing as we yet ought to know. There's nobody who knows anything as they yet ought to know. And if we think we know something, we know nothing as we yet ought to know. It's like, oh, well, I've, I've talked to people, even pastors, who 
have a lot of Bible knowledge, but they like thump you over the head with it. Oh, I can read Greek. So what? You know, do you love people? That's the key thing. God doesn't really care that you can read Greek. He can read Greek too. You know, it's like, <laughs> and he's better at it than you are. You know, because he made it. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, like, like, who cares? It's like, it's about loving people. That's what it's about. And yes, we got to have the truth of the Bible. Otherwise, we, we have to preach the truth of the Bible. That's what we need. It is our food. Thy, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And it was the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. It's like, wow, this becomes my joy. This becomes a rejoicing in my heart because of what mixing faith with what the Bible says. And it becomes applied to our lives by mixing faith with it. Just by simply believing, simply believing what God has said, it's like, wow. And, and, it, and we know that the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans ten seventeen. So it's like that faith is like something supernatural that God gives to us as we respond to truth. But what does the Bible say that there are those that turn their ears away from the truth and are turned unto fables? So we can have a spirit of unbelief also and turn our ears away from the truth. And then guess what? The devil's right there to turn us unto fables and doctrines of demons. It's like, wow, this seems like the whole world is like this. So what do we focus on? What do we look at? Um, So it says here that... He gave some prophets and some evangelists. There's the gift of evangelism. That's, and, and, and yes, but are we all called to evangelize? Absolutely. Absolutely. But there are some people that maybe they have a special gift in evangelism. And, he, and some pastors and teachers. And we believe that this is the same office because the definite article is before pastors and teachers, but there's not, there's not one before teachers. So in other words, they're both in the accusative case. So we believe this is the same office. So a, a pastor is to be, has a twofold ministry, so to say, to be a shepherd, to love people, someone that somebody can come and talk to, they got issues and things going on. Yes, we, we seek advice from the pastor, but then the pastor is also there to teach the flock. Kind of like what Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. It's like, and the pastor realizes, hey, they're not his own people, but they're, they're the people of God. That's why this is the church, the body of Christ. And, and the pastor has been given that, you can say privilege, but it's a responsibility as well. A huge responsibility. So just like how David took care of his father's sheep. You know why he took care of the sheep? Because they were his father's sheep. Because he had respect unto his father. And it's like, wow, it's like a type of Christ. It says there that it was David's father's sheep. And he had to, when he went to go fight, fight Goliath, he had left someone there in charge of the sheep. Very important job. It's like, take care of the sheep, fight the lion. He fought off the lion, he fought off the bear. It's like he was the shepherd, the good shepherd. And so it says here that... Um, it says, now what is the purpose of this? For the perfecting of the saints. Now this word here in the Greek, it's actually the only place in the Bible, <laughs> put my glasses on, it's the only place in the Bible where this word appears. It's kata, uh, kat artismos. Okay, say that fast three times. I'm no, just kidding. Kat, kat artismos. And it means to completely equip, to completely furnish. In other words, this is why we have a church. This is why we have a pastor teacher. This is why God has given us, yes, to completely furnish us, to completely equip to, to completely equip us. We have been equipped now. God has given this to us. We have we are partakers of the divine nature, the Bible says. We've been given a brand new nature, even though I have an old sin nature still. And boy, it likes to rear its ugly head many times. Hey, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's the good news about it. And if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, the one who was righteous, the one who was accepted of God, the one who was risen from the dead. It was proven that he was accepted of God because he was risen from the dead. That was the evidence. Yes, we we, we talked about this in our Romans class, that he was cursed of God because he was crucified on a cross, but he was also accepted 
Because if he hadn't have been risen from the dead, like, like, if, like God would not have risen from the dead if he wasn't approved of God. You know, that was the real proof. And so, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, what is the work of the ministry? Yeah, everything that goes on with the church. I mean, is it, is it so that we can bring hundreds of people in to our ministry? No. no. Although, we could pray for that. Because it says in, it says in Psalm 2.8 to, to ask me, ask me for, uh, for, uh, for the heathen, and I will, give, I will give it to you for your inheritance. But it's talking about Christ there. If you look at the context, it's messianic, you know. That Christ would go out to, to, to preach the gospel, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes, we are called to do that as a church. We do that. But yet it's not about numbers. It's really not. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not upset at all that we don't have hundreds of people come. And it doesn't bother me one bit, to be honest with you. you know, because, we, because we have something special here. I really believe that we do. Every time we gather together, I'm, I'm reminded of that. You know, that there is something special here. There really is. It's great. You know what? It's from God. Where else did it, does it come from? It has to be from above. It's from God. Because we have these things. We have the truth. There, and we have love. And you know what? It's agape love. We really do. It's like, a, like, like we, you know, if you get to know somebody, you get to know them well. <laughs> it's like, you know, you rub the, the, uh, fur, uh, the fur of the cat backwards. <laughs> Doesn't like it too much, you know. You rub it this way, oh, the cat's like... Yeah. But you rub it backwards, you know. You don't like that too much. Stephanie's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, it's, but, it, but it's true, isn't it? It's like, and we do that. We do that with one another. But you know what? We love one another. We forgive one another. We, 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 what? We've been taught how to do that. Well, why? Because Christ loved us. We were able to love one another. We, that he gave us the example to do that. Even while we were yet sinners, we just heard it a second ago. Romans 5.8, while we were even his enemies, Christ loved us. So yes, but the world doesn't know how to do that. The world holds grudges, don't they? Mm -hmm. They remember for a long time, yeah, <laughs> for years, what's, what somebody did to them. They never forget it. You see it in families that happen all the time. It's like they never, well, you, something, you, yeah, yeah, something you said 25 years ago. It's like, I don't even remember even saying that. You know, it's like, so what? This is like, let's live in now. You know, but it says here, it's for the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship, created unto good works. What the word there is poema. It means something that is made. Something that is made, like how God created the universe out of nothing. He made us, we're a new creation. We are God's workmanship, created unto good works. We are, we are saved by grace. It goes. It says that before. We are saved by grace through, through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. But we are God's workmanship. Wow. Wow. It, 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 like God's, God's masterpiece. That's the beautiful thing about it. I've never met two people in this world who, who were the same. I even know, I even know identical twins. You know, like there's there, there's some in Baltimore, identical yeah, twins. Yep, but you know what? They're not exactly the same. Amen. Not exactly. For one thing, they have two different names. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but they're not exactly the same. I guarantee you, their personalities are different. They're 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 they're, 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 they're not the same. There is no two people the same in this world. And you know what? That makes you unique. I don't have to be like somebody else. God made me the way I am. Doesn't mean he made, made somebody homosexual. That's not true. You know, he did Yeah, God made me this way. No, he didn't. But God made you a new creation. And we are, we are created in the image and the likeness of Christ. That's what we share in common. That's why we have a church here. It's beautiful. It's for the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? That, that if Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That's the work of the ministry. Lift up Christ. It's not about us. It's not about, uh, uh, about what you're doing, what you're not doing. That just brings in condemnation. That's what the law does. No, it's about what he's done for me. It's about Christ. We preach Christ and him crucified. 1 Corinthians 1.23. And what was the problem with the Corinthian church? Why couldn't they get it? Because they were carnal. 
1 Corinthians 3, 1. But they were, they were babes in Christ. They were carnal, but they were still in Christ. They were, they were saved. But yet, they didn't understand because they were after the things of men and not after the things of Christ. That's the problem that they had. They didn't have a deep understanding. They didn't know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. As we talked about in Ephesians 3.19, it goes beyond the words that are written here into something supernatural. Hooperballo, I think, is the Greek word, right? Surpasses knowledge. It's like, it's like if you throw a football, you can throw it into outer space? Probably not. No, but, you, but it goes beyond what we can ask or think in the Bible. And, and, so, and God gives this to us. He sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given to us. And how does this happen? It happens through the hearing of the Word of God. It happens through applying truth. It happens through, through, through us fellowshipping together. Because how could I sit down, I mean, I, like I read these incredible things in the Bible, and then not come together and talk about it? In church, well, what would that be like if I sat down, or if any of us would do that? We would study the Bible and then stay to ourselves. That's why, like, there's people that say, "Well, I can watch this online and and um, and 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 be and be able to um, to understand." Yeah, you might get something, but it it doesn't equal coming in person and fellowshipping. That's why the Bible says to gather yourselves together and do it all the more. As you see the day approaching, Hebrews ten twenty five. We 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 don't we don't forsake the assembling of ourselves. Don't do that. It doesn't mean like you know in the future whenever they have internet and things like that that you can forsake the assembling of yourselves. It's like no, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves, but do it all the more, especially as you see the day approaching. Aha! Well, we see that you know that the day is approaching and it's here. It's right at the door. That's what Jesus said that. You know, you, you can't recognize the, um, what do you say in Matthew, that you can't, you can't recognize the, the end times. But you can see that summer is near, because you can see that the leaves of the, the tree are getting green. So you know that summer is near, but you can't discern the end of the times. It's like, yes, we can. Mm-hmm. We can know it. So, and it says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What's the edifying of the body of Christ? The word, is, the word means to build up. Hmm. So our preaching means to, we, that we build up. We need, that, 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 that's our prayer, that, that, we, that we, we get built up together for a spiritual house for the Lord. It's like, wow, that, that, that's, that we come and we get edified. This is a place where I come and I, I don't get beat down because I'm not good enough for God. I come and I get built up because of who I already am in Christ. We get built up. Built up in truth. We need that so bad. There's no, no one who doesn't need that. Who doesn't need to be built up. And so we need that. And that's why the gifts of the Spirit are given for the edification of the body of Christ. That's the purpose of them. That, that if we love one another, that if we have the gifts of the Spirit, which we all have them, it says that, it is given to every one of us in Romans chapter 12. But the gifts are given to build up and to love one another in a special way way, special, unique way. So we can discover what those gifts are, but we, where, do we discover, where do we discover them? By coming to church and getting involved in ministry. Kind of like Philip, who was, he became, he was involved with the um, ministry of the women, the uh, b- b- bickering widows. They were like complaining and stuff, and he was, they said, hey, put this guy, Philip, in charge of them. Yeah. Take care of their stuff. But then he becomes Philip the Evangelist. So like later on, he discovered what his gifts were by getting involved with the things of, of God and by getting involved with ministry. It's like, wow, that is amazing. And God used him mightily, didn't he? And it says, and then what does it say here in verse 13? Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Now that is great. Like we don't have people up here preaching one doctrine and somebody preaching something else. Like, we believe the same thing. You know, I mean, I mean what would happen if, if Arnie got up here and said, well, you can lose your salvation? Of course, he would never say that, right? <laughs> I would be like, you know, and we, we'd all be that way, right? But, but like, no, we believe that you can't lose it. And why? Because we know the God who loves us and who will never throw us away. Because it says so in the Bible. 
that he's given us the Spirit who is the earnest of our inheritance, the down payment that guarantees our salvation in Ephesians 1.13. So we have the same faith. If we go back here a little bit, um, let's see here. Um, where is that at? Um, let's see if I can find it. I knew I should have made, took better notes. Um, yeah, so it says to the unity of the faith. But then the Bible tells us to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirits in the bond of peace. In Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians chapter 3. Anyway, we'll find it later. We endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What is this? So we have the unity of faith. We, have the, we endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What does this mean? That the spirit is here. The same spirit is here. And if, we, and if we have the truth that's being preached and we have the love of God, which is supernatural agape love, we have the Spirit of God operating in our church. And it's not some kind of weird thing where we're like falling down backwards and we're doing all these weird things. Oh, we're getting slain in the Spirit. No, it's not. It's like what, there is love. That's something that's real. Not something that people question and go, yeah, you know, I don't know about that one. You know, something don't look right about that. You know, and it's because it's not. It's like because, because our faith is real and our love is real for one another. And it's, it is from God. That's the reason why. So we endeavor to keep this. Um, and it says, until we come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. Whoo! Wow. That we may know him. That we may know him. That was Paul's prayer, that, that I may know him. It's like the, 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 that's our purpose, that we would get to know Christ. And, that, and, that, and so until we come to the knowledge, what does this mean? It says, it says, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is a person who grows into spiritual maturity. And we grow together. This is like we need a church to do this, don't we? I mean, we need, we, we need a church, a good church, that, that, that's where, that, that we are a place where we are able to grow. Just like what Peter said in 2 Peter 3.18. Oh, Peter is a great example of someone who could grow, isn't he? He says, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The very last verse that he wrote, by the way, that was like, in the story, grow, 2 Peter 3.18. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we grow in. Grow in grace. We're built up in grace. It's the word of God, the word of grace that builds us up and gives us an inheritance in Acts 20, 32. The word of his grace. So that's why we have a church called Greater Grace. Um, and so it says here, until the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is what people see. That if we love one another, what will the people see? What will the world see? That we are Christ's disciples. John 13, 35. They will know this. They won't know it because you know a lot of the Bible. They'll see it because of love. It is like the knowledge. There's the word oida, right, in the, in the Greek, which means knowledge by observation. That's the kind of knowledge that it is. That they can see it. They don't have to like get a textbook and study it. It's like they know, they see that it's love. They know that it's from God. It's like like the whole world, they, they find out you're a Christian, they're like automatically they want to start like, you know, see if you're gonna sin or something, right? They want to know, are you gonna mess up? Like, you know, you know, you ever you ever be around people like that? Well, like, well, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, or like whatever. Like why, you know, it's like, no, like they want it, you know, but but when they see that you have genuine love, hey, you're for real. That's why the Bible tells us, we, we, we read it in 1 Peter 1.22, that, 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 that we love each other with a, that with, a, with a genuine love, with a pure heart. We're able to love each other with a pure heart, fervently. Wow. It's like, and, 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 so, and so what does it say here? Let, let, let's keep reading. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Verse 14. Because why? Because we're rooted and grounded in love, rooted and grounded in, in truth. And it says, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. 
Because there's people that are like that, right? It's like, why do they, like, they, they seek for a church, why? They, like, what do they look for in a church? They look for a church that has good music. And by the way, I'm very glad about what's happening with the music here. It's like, keep it up. We, that's great, you know, that, that that is happening. It's awesome. So thank you for that. It is like, I love seeing things like that happening. Like, but, but it's like, but why, like, like people, like, they have different ideas about what they seek for in a church. I mean, what do you think? Like, what would you think for a church? How yeah. They hand, how they handle the treasure. How they handle the treasure, yes, that's good. Which is Christ, isn't it? It's like, it is Christ. It is like, what, what is lifted up is Christ. We lift Him up in the Word. We lift Him up in love for one another. And we end up having this long history that goes for years, where we love for years, decades. Where we, where we love one another. It's amazing. We don't like, hey, I'm not going somewhere else. Why? Because I can't. Like Stephanie and I, we looked at other churches around. We never could find one where we could plug into. You know? So we just pray. We just pray. We say, just God, okay, let's just let's start a church. Why not? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And God was faithful. God is faithful. And here you are today. So, and so, and it says that we be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men. Like, you know what this word means in the Greek? Like, it, it, it gives you the picture of someone who has two pairs of dice in their hand, right? One throws a seven every time, one does, never throws a seven. And they're able to slip it in there and go, you know, it's like throw the dice to trick you. And it's like, and that's what people do. It's like they... You know, like, like, they, 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 like, like, they want your money. They want, you know, they, they talk about money all the time. I mean, we don't ever bring it up, really. But God is faithful. God is faithful. We have the offering back there. You know, we don't take an official offering. We had a church in Las Vegas of 150 people. We never took a lot, an offering. And God always supplied our needs. He's faithful. You're faithful givers, Really. You know, I said, like God is faithful. And, and so if, if you, he supplies all our needs. We're able to have this building here. We're going to be able to afford to have our conference. Everything that we need, God supply. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. We believe it. He does. And so we're not, it isn't, there's no trickery involved. It's only truth being spoken. And we believe it. And it says that... Um, that in cunning craftiness of men, wherein they lie and wait to deceive. But what does it say here? Speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him into all things, which is, the, which is the head, even Christ. This is what we speak, the truth. And we speak it in love. I mean, think about it. We could preach the Bible this way. It's like, we, let's, let's go to the book of Leviticus. Is it the truth? Yes. And we could preach on the pulpit. We could say, we can start talking about the things that you need to change yourself, your life. Change your own self. But I can't. My old sin nature prevents me from doing it. I need Christ. I need God. I, I pray that continuously all the time. It's like, I need you, God. Yeah. I need you. And it's like, and we need, we need one another. Um, so it says here, that we speak the truth in love. We may grow, and that what, how does that, what, what's the result? We grow up into Him, into all things. We become spiritually mature. This happens by choice. This happens by choice. And it says that, um, which, is, which is the head, even Christ, in whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. You know, I'm building this um, bookshelf in our house, and it's, it's, been, it's, it's been quite the project. It's, 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 it's been something. It's a, it's, and it's, yeah, we'll have to show it to you more because there's been some more progress going on with it. But it's, but it's like, but I want every piece to fit together so you can't see the seams in it, so that what it works as one unit. Every joint supplies. So in other words, it's, we are fitly framed together. You know, we ever read, like I think that Pastor Stevens 
preach the message about the um, le, le, um, Leviathan, right? And what does it say in the Old Testament? That there was, he had the scales on the Leviathan, there was no air in between the scales. You remember that? Which means there was no space there. It was like, that's the way how we are. There's no air between us because why? Because the devil is the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Wow. But that's not who we are. We're not the children of disobedience. Nope. But that's what the devil does. And can even operate in the life of a believer. I believe. I mean, they can. Because of not being in the place where they can hear truth. So they can have the mind of Christ, because my soul cleaves to the dust, and I'm quickened according to the word. There's no air, there's no space between us, that we are fitly joined together and compacted, that every joint supplies. You know, I'm do, I've been doing these workouts, have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> I've been working out. And you know, and I, some of these weights, that, some of these workouts that I do, it affects my joints right here, and I, I feel it. So I have to be careful, you know, one of them is like this. You know, it affects that you get like right here, like you get it right in the elbows. But you know, you think that your joints aren't really that important, but they are very important. It's like, you know, I, I need it to be able to move around and stretch. And, you know, it's like it connects my bones and my muscles together. Yeah. How important is that? You know, we think that, well, you know, every joint supplies. Everybody's important. Everybody has a portion here. You know, we don't look at somebody like that, ah, they're not important. That's why the Bible says that you even take the person that's the, that's the least kind of person and exalt them to be the highest. They need to be built up. They need to know that they are important in the body of Christ. And they are fitly framed. They, it says it's according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. Hmm. Wow. Every part supplies, every part works together into the increase of the body unto what? The edifying of itself in love. Wow. So the gifts of the Spirit are not given for the edification of self. But what are they given to? The edifying of the body. Wow. That means they operate in the body. We operate in the body. The body, ed- the body builds itself up. And this is, we know, this is, this is spiritual, isn't it? The, the church is called the body of Christ. The body of Christ, where the Holy Spirit, who has come to essentially take the place of Christ on the earth, that's why Jesus said that unless I go to the Father, that the Spirit won't come. And you should rejoice about that, he said, because the Spirit will come. And because he would be lifted up. And that the whole world would, would be drawn to him if he was lifted up, signifying what death he would die. He said, you should rejoice about this. And that he would send the Spirit to dwell in each and every person. To live in us forever. Is what it says, that, that he would send the Spirit to be in you forever. It's like, wow, the Spirit of God. That's amazing when you think about that. And, the, and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's kind of like... Ooh, you know, it's like, that leads me into faith obedience, doesn't it? It seems to circle back around again. It's like that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So be careful what we do with our body, what we look at, what we, what, what, what we hear. Because the God is here. The Spirit of God is here all the time. It's like, this is amazing. And we together, we all have the same spirit but we have different, we have different gifts. I mean, that's just amazing to think about that because it is it is specific and unique. I think, although they're listed in the Bible, what they are in Romans chapter twelve, First Corinthians twelve. But so, and, you know, it, this whole thing is just amazing here because it goes into talking about unbelief. What are the effects of unbelief? We had talked about it before, like in Romans chapter one. That what that God gave them over, that the things of God have that have been revealed unto them, and they are without an excuse in Romans 1.18. The things of God. So it goes back to choice again, doesn't it? That we that that we that the world chooses. And then he goes on to say this is a brand new way of thinking. This is what Paul the Apostle says. He says it right here. 
Where did I get that from? The title right here. It says a new way of thinking. And it says that, let's go through it here. It says, this I say, therefore, in verse 17, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. You ever like talk to people and it's just like it's just talking, but there's no eternal purpose there? I mean, it's like, they're just coming out, but they're not comprehending. well, they're just talking and it's like, but it's not eternal. You know, it's like, it's just wasted. Kind of like playing video games, I think. Right. It's like, it's just kind of like a waste of time. I mean, I think, you know, and then, but then it says right here, having the understanding darkened, hmm. kind of like you go to the doctor and you have a procedure done. I'm going to go have my understanding darkened. You know, it's like, it's something that happens to them by not listening or caring about what the truth is. Having their understanding darkened. Be, why? Because being alienated from the life of God. That's why. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Came to give you life, but they were separate themselves from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Wow, it says, who being past feeling... This past feeling here, it has the idea of being calloused over. Like there, there's nothing, like, like there's no feeling there. There's no feeling. And, it's like, and it says, having, being past feeling, having given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But in verse 20 it says, but you have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. This is not the way we are. This is not, we, this is not what we learn from Christ. That we are alienated from the life of God. That we that 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 our heart, that our, our minds are not blinded. We are not alienated from the life of God. We have been given eternal life, and it is our present possession. Wow. This is what we learn. We continue to learn this. Um, this is what we learn in the church. And it says, verse twenty one: If you, if so be, you have heard him. And have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. As the truth is in Jesus. Hmm. Have you heard him? Like, like God speaks to us. That used to be the name of this ministry. Bible speaks. I thought it was a cool name. Because the Bible does speak, and God speaks to us through the Word. I mean, people say, "Well, yeah, God, God told me this. God told me that," but. I know for sure because the Bible says we have a more sure word. This is the this is the truth. There, there's no like differentiated. Well, did God speak to me? I'm not sure. Did He say to love your enemies? Oh, God spoke to me. That was the truth. Yeah. Like these. This is what the Bible says. So there's no uncertainty. We have a more sure word of prophecy, and you do well to take heed until the day dawns. And the day star arises in your hearts. Ooh, I love that verse. You do well to take heed. Listen to, to the voice of God. And it says, If you have heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the, to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness. And true holiness. This is the new man. This is the new birth. We have been born again after the image and the likeness of God. And we can, it's kind of like taking a garment off. Like you take your clothes off, you put new clothes on. But that's the idea that's there. That we put off. Because, because, and what does this mean? What people see. And we know it in our own hearts. We know what the truth is. We, we, we do it for our own selves. So that we know that we are in Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in this is how I know I'm born again. This is how I know I'm saved. There's the evidence of Christ. That's what Paul said, that I have the marks of Christ. And what does this mean? That, the, that he can see it himself and the whole world can see it. Because the Holy Spirit who is in us points to the things of Christ. That's his ministry. Points to the things of Christ. That we, we can put this off. We have this ability to do this. Now, the old man. Take it off, put on Christ. Put on love. The Bible goes on to say to walk in love. Ephesians 
Be ye therefore imitators of me. Walk in love. And we could go for this forever. This is a loaded book. Ephesians is loaded. It's about the church. I mean, it's amazing to study these things and go through this. And what it says in here. So I think we'll just end it right there, though. Kind of like playing the record player. Scratch it off. But we'll just end it right there. So amen? So, Father, we thank you so much for this, the Word of God, the Word of truth, the Spirit of truth, the message of grace. We thank you for loving us, for what you've done for us, that it's not about us, it's all about you. Our church is about you. And what the world gets drawn to, that they're drawn to you, not to us. They're drawn to love. We just want to give anyone an opportunity. If you've never accepted Jesus, accept him today. Just ask him to save you. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough to go to heaven. Save me. I want to be born again. I want to go to heaven when I die. I want to be saved. I accept your gift of eternal life. If you said that prayer today, if you accepted Jesus, then give me a call. Pretty sure I'll still have the same phone number for years from now. 727-452-7445. 727-452-7445. I'd love to talk to you about your faith, or you can even send me an instant message on Facebook or get a hold of me. I can be found easily. So get in touch with me. And then also we have uh, Sunday morning services at the Clarion Inn in the Clearwater, Florida. And we have Bible